after the successful overthrow of the Bujia government on 13 January 1972, the National Redemption Council NRC was formed with Lieutenant Colonel Echampon as the head of state and chairman. Some members of the council were J. H. Kobina, who was the IGP, P. F. Quay, who was Navy Commander, Major A. H. Salome, E. N. Mori as Attorney General, and many others. If you want to find out some of the reasons why K. A. Bujia was overthrown, you can check in the link in the description. I have a separate video on that. In July 1972, few months after the overthrow of K. A. Bujia, Colonel Ignatius Kutu Echampon negotiated with the Guinea government to have Nkrumah's body repatriated and reburied in his hometown in Nkrofo in the western region of Ghana. Let's take and watch some of the footage on the day of Nkrumah's reburial at his hometown in Nkrofo in the western region. Colonel Echampon also suffered some coups against his government. The most important of these coups were in 1972 and 1976. In 1972, some group of young soldiers tried to topple Echampon's government. However, it was not successful. The 1976 coup, however, involved Major Kojo Chikata, who would later become a prominent figure in the PNDC government, led by Rollins. A champion came to inherit a lot of debt. Ghana owned a lot of debt uh, during uh, that period, and so he uh, decided to champion a popular policy known as Yentria, which he felt that Ghana was not going to honor her uh, loan obligations to the international community. And Ghana, in, in simple terms, was not going to pay all the loans that she owned. And so this you know, came with it a backlash uh, from the international communities and donors. And a lot of these countries decided not to help Ghana or even uh, give any items of that sort to Ghana because Ghana was heavily dependent on importation and more so there was no um, uh, money to import all right into the country and so a champion, champ a champion championed the self-reliance uh, policy operation feed yourself operation feed your industry all the uh, materials you find there were made and produced here in Ghana and for two years the country never imported anything from the outside world and this was a, a, a testimony that yes indeed the country could have done uh, better and so these are some of the uh, shots of champions activities in Ghana uh, during his 
antenna as the uh, chairman of the National Redemption Council. So over here, a champion helped some group of farmers uh, to construct irrigation uh, to help uh, irrigate uh, their farms. And so you find them digging tunnels and other things. And this was one of the features of the military. Uh, most of them got uh, themselves involved in the uh, work that they were doing. And so all the military uh, leaders that we will come across, you find them being part of the work, working with the people, unlike the civilians. So at this period, this irrigation was constructed by, by Ghanaians and Ghanaians themselves with no uh, foreign aid. Champon did quite a lot of things. He also uh, opened, you know, some factories to to help in in, in, in the production of certain uh, items in the country, and that is what you also find on your screen. A champion indeed did a lot for Ghana. Um, he did a lot, but it's just unfortunate that a champions. Uh, champions are ruled in the history of Ghana because he came as a military uh, leader you know a lot of people don't want to talk about it and more so he came to overthrow uh, uh, the PP that the Progress Party which uh, today uh, are the remnant you know of the NPP and, and so of course no NPP may want to talk about a champion and don't also forget that NDC was also the party that came to, I mean, the AFRC, because that came to overthrow a champions and the Ekufu's uh, government, are today also known as the NDC. And so these two, you know, major political parties playing a major role in Ghana today are actually have issues with the NRC and the SMC 1 and 2. And therefore, none of these political parties wants to elogize or talk about the achievement of a champion and that uh, partly has accounted for the reason why a champion's achievement uh, are less uh, visible in our history books but a champion indeed did a lot of things for Ghana in this video a champion assesses the progress that Ghana was making and also outline a five-year developmental plan from 1975 to 1980 and he is going to spell it out the details of this five-year developmental plan. During this period, in spite of the difficulties brought about by grave international economic circumstances over which we have no control, we have been able to achieve through the enthusiastic response of all Ghanaians a reasonable measure of social and economic stability. We as a people are now more confident in tackling our national problems. We have also created the right climate in which positive development can take place. Accordingly, we are proposing guidelines to serve as a framework for our further economic development and growth during the ensuing five years. In launching these guidelines, we are calling Ghanaians to even greater sacrifices and achievements. It is the fervent hope of the government, that Ghanaians will rally around now as they have in the past, and that together we shall move forward as a team to achieve a better and fuller life for all. And I'll show you a copy of the guidelines for the five-year development plan. Now, due to the work, the immense work that a champion did for the country, uh, he was loved by many and some of the traditional chiefs held a deba to honor uh, a champion and this is the Asante uh, people as you can see there, I think that was uh, Pukuare and uh, Yana and other chiefs uh, who held a deba to honor a champion and what he has done for the country and that is the deba 
you find on your screens. So from 1975 onwards, the country began to experience economic hardship. Basic uh, commodities uh, such as milk, sugar, uh, soap were all uh, scarce in the country. And, and this was mainly because of a trademark practice which was called uh, Kalabuli at that time that we all know. Some of the traders were hoarding these goods and so the video you find on your screen where soldiers who had gone to seize these items from the traders and they were distributing them to the public i think at a control price and so that is what you find on your screen and kalabole became very 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 uh, serious there was intense uh, pressure on a champon to actually allow election to take place but the champon was I mean, other man. So he decided to change the face of the National Redemption Council. He felt that probably the people around him. So he decided to reconstitute the NRC. And so the video you find on your screen was the reconstitution of the National Redemption Council to be called the SMC1, the Supreme Military Council 1. So that is a champion uh, ushering in the new appointees for the Supreme Military Council one in 1976. So a champion changed the National Redemption Council to the SMC one with the aim of uh, trying to uh, pacify the people so that uh, th there will be a new change. A champion also uh, proposed a certain uh, reform like the UNICO whereby uh, he felt that the military and the civilians can work together. Champon actually was not, uh, he didn't want election to take place, if I may, I may say in that way. He, of course, wanted to be president for quite a long time or chairman of the country for a long time. On the Thursday, July 6th, 1978, the country uh, woke up to the news of the resignation of Major General Kutu Echampon as the head of state and chairman of the Supreme Military Council, SMC-1. In a letter to the Supreme Military Council, General Echampo said he had taken the decision in the interest of the nation. A Lieutenant General F. W. K. Ekufu, Chief of Defense Staff, has assumed the chairmanship of the council. And following the resignation of General Echampo, the following promotions have been made. Major General R. E. A. Kote, Army Commander, now becomes Chief of Defense Staff. Brigadier N. A. Odate Wellington has now been promoted to the rank of Major General and becomes the Army Commander. And so from here, in 1978, uh, General Ekufu takes over the SMC-1. Now, uh, General Ekufu reconstitutes the SMC-1 with new uh, members uh, like the chairman, Mr. Ernest Akum, who will be the IGP. Uh, Ekufu will be the chairman. Uh, Major General Ari Kote will be the chief of defense staff. Rear Admiral J.K. Amedome will be the Navy commander. Uh, and then some of the members, Major General E.K. Utuka and others. So, from 1978, Ekufu takes over the country and reconstitutes the SMC-1 as SMC-2. 
Even though on July 31st, 1978, the SMC2 led by Akufu proposed to return Ghana to civilian rule with a transitional interim national government. However, uh, there was intense pressure on the SMC2 to change this idea on November 30th, 1978. The University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAP, for instance, called on the government to produce a permanent constitution reflecting the mood of the nation for freedom of association and expression. The National Union of Ghana Student NUCS also added its voice to this call and reiterated the need for a general election by universal adult suffrage to return the country to civilian rule by July 1st, 1979. In late October, announcements were made that local council elections would be held for the first time in 20 years and on December 13, 1978, the political party's decree was passed. It banned all old political parties like the CPP, the UP, the NAL, and the NPP. Uh, this video is actually in part. I am doing a full video, a full documentary, as you have seen already, from uh, 1957 up to uh, 1992. And so this is the first part of the video. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the footages over there. Uh, I'll be doing the next um, uh, parts. And that's the Second Republic, Third Republic, as well as the Fourth Republic. Uh, right from the CPP to the NLC to uh, the PPP, uh, the PP to the NRC, uh, to the SMC1, SMC2, uh, to the AFRC, PNDC, up until the Fourth Republic. So there are a lot for you to enjoy. Uh, from this video. I know it's going to be a very long video, so I've decided to do it in parts, and this is the first part. Uh, do not forget to subscribe, share our links to people that you think may be interested in the video, and have a nice day, and thank you for watching.